Hello and welcome to Kim Bay's vlog series. We're continuing with reading between the lines and today our title is Pearl of Great Price. I read this in Matthew 13, 44 to 52 and I'll read part of it for you now. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on a lookout for a choice pearl. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. So uh, when I saw the title for today, I thought, oh great, I know this um, parable and I'm pretty clear on what it means. Um, news to me was I'd got it the other way around. And um, so what I mean by that is when we try and uh, decipher what um, Jesus' parables are trying to tell us, we need to pick out what um, things are and try and uh, substitute in what the relevant part might be. So in this case, we'd be trying to work out, so Jesus is telling us what the kingdom of heaven is like. So we're trying to work out who the merchant is and what or who the pearls are. So in the past, I used to always think that we were the merchant and um, it would just show how much we should value the kingdom and we should sell everything that we own and um, that's what we should do to show the value that the kingdom has for us and it can be viewed as that but after doing some research about it um, it's actually read differently so um, that Christ is the merchant and the church or we are the pearl and I'll read what our author goes on to say so we are the purchased treasure not valued or valuable in ourselves but only in the Redeemer's eyes he is the glorious giver we are those bought at a price this is what the kingdom of heaven is like I am not a great chooser I am the chosen I am not the great lover I am beloved I am not great Redeemer I am the purchased I am not the great seeker I am the found of course once I see this then my heart is one then the treasure I then I treasure Christ I rejoice then I consider all things at loss for his sake but such a response will always be just that a response Christ is always the initiator initiator always and that was surprising to me um, I don't know why it's surprising to me because it's always God's grace and mercy that initiates everything and um, why would it be me that is searching for Christ although I was searching for Christ and at times I didn't know what I was searching for but obviously um, God and Christ have been searching for us and wanting us to turn to him and I read this in Ephesians 1 um, five even before he made the world God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus this is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure so we praise God for this glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son so I'm not sure how, if you know um, how a pearl is made and I'd seen a programme of it quite a while ago but when we were away on holiday I saw lots of um, oyster shells on the beach and um, anyway the oyster shells are so the pearl is made inside an oyster and um, for farmed pearls they put a, an irritant something like a piece of sand inside the oyster and then the oyster then goes and coats the irritant to protect itself um, so it coats it with basically shell and it keeps growing and growing and growing and it keeps doing this throughout its life and then in the farmed oyster they go and take it out and obviously this is how we got farmed oysters but uh, I'm sorry pearls but um, in a natural pearl it's the same process but some irritant goes into the oyster and it causes it to do this so um, the you know it's it's an amazing process and the other thing is that the oyster 
on the outside of an oyster it's a very hideous looking um, flaky shell and on the inside it's such a beautiful you know the, the pearlescent the color the it's it's stunning so anyway i'll read um in ephesians 5 we write that read this and um ephesians 5 25 just as christ loved the church he gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean washed by the cleansing of god's word he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish instead she will be holy and without fault a pearl in the making i would say with that um and i've heard other people describe uh, pearls um as you know the, the irritant being the sin uh, or our sin and god covering it with um his word and cleansing us and making us without blemish um our author goes on to say but here's how we belong to god not by giving our lives to him instead we look to jesus on the cross and there we see the most incredible truth he has purchased me at an incredible cost keep looking there until you are won by his love whatever response we make at that point is belated the ultimate and eternity defining truth is this he gave his life for me of course i belong to him so this is how our author finishes today and what a wonderful message that was for me anyway um because i hadn't ever thought of it like that and i thought again that it was me that should be doing something but Christ has already done it and that's all we need to remember and um, we look to him and our love or anything we do is a response to his doing already what he has done. I hope that's blessed you everyone and um, have a wonderful day. Um, amen and see you soon.